all that Rembrandt lighting. You look good. What's up, guys? Got a brand new video for you today. Here with Patrick. What's up, guys? How you guys doing? How are you doing? I'm solid. It's a little cold, a little crispy. I'm actually hoping it gets more crispy, to be honest. What you got there? We've got the brand new Fuji X-T4. Look at this. Old and busted, <laughs> new hotness. We're gonna take a look at some weather sealing with this new X-T4 and shoot some, some night stuff because we've got some snow going on right now. Sure do. And it looks, it looks sick, so uh, yeah, let's, let's rock it. All right, so something I didn't talk about in the little first impressions video is something that we're doing right now, and it's actually dual recording. So you can record 4K 10-bit to both cards, which is pretty cool. You're getting like a straight backup. I'll show you what that looks like. They also move the cards so they're like this now instead of side by side. One thing I need to mention is that we, uh, we're still using the same battery from when I did my first hands-on impressions. Same battery. And, and what's it at? Three bars left out of five, so. It's like just what, like 20%? There. And I've already changed my Canon battery once vlogging on the 5D Mark IV. So we're shooting at ISO 1600 right now, which actually looks pretty clean in the viewfinder and also on the screen. Obviously you can't really tell until you get into the edit, but coming from the X-T3, I have no issue pushing it to 3200. Crush the blacks a little bit, you're not really gonna get much noise. Uh, and also Fuji grain just looks like, the high ISO looks more like a film grain than any other camera I've pretty much used. Patrick filming Optimus Prime. So far, how do you feel about this IBIS? If you're not moving a lot, which is what IBIS is for, but if you're relatively stable, you know, lock your shoulders, kind of keep it, plus having the screen out like this, and you're low, I wouldn't walk with it. I certainly wouldn't run with it, but if you're just doing slow, small pans, it's very, very stable. But that's the key to IBIS. People want it to be a gimbal walking down the street, but it's really for getting micro jitters out, especially on a prime lens like this. If you're just sitting here, if I wasn't using IBIS, it would be like, it would be nuts. You would see every small little movement. Well, that's exactly it. Like you can't run with a thing. It's it's not a it's not a gimbal. It's just supposed to help remove micro jitters and random little, you know, little movements and stuff. When this lady walks across the street, I'm gonna try and catch her. as like I stride by. Here we go. That's street photography. Nice right. stride by shots. Insanely slippery. Dude, you're extreme. Too extreme. A full send, man. Full send. Parkour. <laughs> I'm, I actually really like this lens a lot. I think it's better for stills, but it is really cool for video. You're getting like insanely... At F2, because it's crop sensor, it looks really, really nice. Really, really shallowed up the field. Uh, and with the IBIS, it actually... You can hand bomb it, which is nuts. Because what is this? I'll watch your back. Oh. 90 mil crop sensor. I'm, so, I'm terrible at math, but I think it's like a 130, 140 mil. Yeah, 135. Super, super telephoto, but with the IBIS, and if you're, again, if you're super, super ninja with it, you can definitely get away with short bursts of clips, 10 seconds at a time, sniper it, take a deep breath, <gasps> hold it, <laughs> uh, and it's definitely usable, which is nuts, because you could never do this with the X-C3. If you start to move a little bit, it's gonna do this thing which IBIS does where it, it's, it's like catching up to your movements, yeah. so it starts to feel like really unnatural. I'm gonna turn it off completely though. You can set it up. Oh my god, the micro jitters are awful. Yeah, if you show those clips side by side, they're like night and day. One of the things uh, me and Patrick talked about earlier is that we kind of wish the X-T4 would have had like a full-size HDMI port or at least like a mini HDMI port because this micro HDMI port business is not great. I'm and not a fan of micro HDMI at all. It breaks easily. If you put a little bit of tension on it, it usually snaps and if it breaks, you just have to send this in to get repaired and it's just a huge pain. I think that might be it. The camera's a little too wet, it's a little too cold. And finally, we depleted this brand new X-T4 battery. So I think it's time to call it. All right, so that's it for this video. I have no idea what this video is about, but we, uh, we're out here shooting weather we're sealing shooting. tests, right? That's all that matters. We're out here shooting, putting the XC4 through its paces in downtown Toronto. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Follow Patrick 
put links to his social media stuff below. Thank he makes you. cool videos and he's the Twitter master. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Meow.